Good morning. Welcome. Good to see you all here on this second Sunday after Epiphany. Uh, today we start hearing uh, call stories where Jesus calls his disciples to follow after him. Uh, a few announcements this morning. Um, first of all, you may notice that there's a uh, uh, an insert in your bulletins uh, that we are required to read to you this morning to announce that uh, in two weeks' time at our annual meeting, there will be uh, an opportunity for you to vote on some amendments to the Constitution. So I will read this now to you. St. Paul Lutheran Church annual meeting will be held on Sunday, January 28th, 2018, following the 9 a.m. worship service. In addition to reviewing 2017, the election of new board members, approving the 2018 budget, and setting the benevolence, the following amendments to the Constitution will be voted on. Motion to change the description of church council officers and boards in the Constitution on page 8, part A, to the voting membership of the council shall consist of the pastor and not less than 10 and no more than 12 members of the congregation. Motion to change page 10, part 5 of the Constitution to read uh, 6 to 8 council persons, 3 to 4 of whom shall be elected in even-numbered years, and three to four of whom shall be elected in odd-numbered years to serve for a term of two years. Motion to change the description of church board's nominating committee in the Constitution on page 11, part B1. A nominating board shall consist of three voting members of this congregation, two of whom shall be members of the church council appointed by the president of the congregation following the annual meeting of the congregation, and one whom shall be elected at the annual meeting. Motion to correct the typed error on page 8, section A1 in the Constitution, previously approved at the January 26, 2014 meeting, regarding the church council president's term to a president who shall serve for a term of one year, having normally served the previous year as vice president. And finally, motion to correct the typed error on page 9, section A2 in the Constitution, previously approved at the January 26, 2014 meeting, regarding the church council vice president's term to a vice president to serve for a term of one year who automatically assumes the office of president for the following year. Uh, in addition, uh, we've got a few things coming up. Um, you may take home today your poinsettia if you have purchased one. Uh, you're free to take that with you. Uh, after the annual meeting in two weeks, uh, we will uh, have the joy of uh, our Luther League serving breakfast to us. So please join us both for the annual meeting and for that breakfast together. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, we begin our worship singing hymn number 46 in the blue book, Jesus Come For We Invite You.
you to please rise as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the Word was life, and the life was the light of all people. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, full of grace and truth. to perfect faith in him, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to please be seated as together we sing uh, the first verse of hymn number 744, soon and very soon, and we invite the children to come up. Did 
Jesus, when did God start making you his follower? When did you, when did you become a follower? Do you know? It starts with a B. Uh, baptism. Yeah. In this fountain right here, for many of you, maybe others were baptized someplace else, but in the waters of baptism, Jesus called you to be his followers. And when he claimed you, uh, do, do you think you guys were babies when this happened, right? Do you think when this happened that you said, okay, Jesus, uh, I want to be your follower, so make me a follower? Were you able to do that when you were little tiny babies? No. Jesus comes to you in the waters of baptism, and he says, I make you mine. I choose you. I love you. I want to have you forever. And in that moment, you are made into his followers. And what do followers do when you're made into a follower? Well, you just begin to follow. And so this is what we're doing in life. Uh, Jesus, thankfully, he keeps calling to us, doesn't he? He keeps speaking to us, calling to us giving him, us his word, reassuring us over and over again who we belong to. And who is it that we belong to? We belong to Jesus, don't we? Yes, this is who we belong to. Not just mom and dad or sister and brother who we love so much, but we belong to Jesus. Uh, and do you think that if God has known us since the beginning of time, do you think he's ever not going to know us? No, he's always going to know us. Uh, and so we are with him and we belong to him and we're the follower of Jesus forever. Does this sound like a pretty good thing? Yeah, I think it sounds pretty great. Would you guys pray with me? And maybe the congregation will uh, pray as well. Shall we pray? Let us pray. Dear Jesus, Jesus. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for making us your followers. Keep speaking to us so that we may be faithful to you. Bless our families and loved ones and keep us all safe. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Thank you guys for coming up. Uh, the treat basket is right over there if you want to grab one on your way back. because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, 
for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. We will read responsibly Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I stay, surely the darkness shall cover me. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What a delight the word of Christ is. Here today we have people that are so humorous, so delusional, so like us. First, Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, (laughs) finds Philip and makes him a follower. But Philip puts his own spin on the situation Uh, embellishes the story, puts himself in the driver's seat as he says to Nathaniel, we have found him. Jesus, he says, didn't find me, but I found him. Jesus didn't save me, but I saved myself by my finding. 
Then, hearing that Jesus is from Nazareth, Nathanael's response reflects his cynicism, expressing his doubt, uh, the deceit that has overtaken his heart. Nathanael says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? So Philip invites the skeptic Nathanael to come and see. Yet when Nathanael, when Jesus sees Nathanael, remarkably, for some reason, he says of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. So what's going on here? Well, Jesus is giving us a glimpse of the sinful human condition from which he has come to save us. We, as people, humans, think of ourselves as the author of our faith, as Philip did, and we mistakenly believe things like, I found the Lord. I made a decision for Christ. I invited Jesus into my heart. Uh, we convince ourselves to believe, like that old pietist song says, I have decided to follow Jesus. Now, Nathaniel has a similar misapprehension. He believes that he's able to discern for himself what is truth. And then he will believe that truth, that he will know the difference between good and evil. Now, we too believe as human beings that we know the truth. Uh, more than that, we believe that this truth lies deep inside of us. We are students of Socrates who taught that one just needs a midwife to help us to deliver the truth that already lies within us. And this truth, then, we believe, is what will save us when we understand it and we act upon it. We, like Philip and Nathaniel, place ourselves in the driver's seat of faith. We make ourselves the centers of our own universe. We mistakenly believe that Christianity is all about us, our obedience, our walk with Jesus, our faithfulness towards him. But when we do that, we are deluding, deceiving ourselves. We replace the truth with a lie. We replace the object with the subject. We make ourselves God. And we miss entirely the amazing thing that Jesus is doing. Because Jesus is choosing people. He's making them new creatures. Jesus is making followers. With Philip, Jesus says, follow me, and ta-da, Philip is a follower. Jesus speaks the word, and the word does what Jesus has sent it to do. Now, not because Philip made a good decision and decided to follow Jesus, but because when the author of life chooses you, you do what the chosen do. You follow him. And so Philip then leaves behind the devil, the world, and his sinful self, which lead only to death and damnation. And he is transported through Christ's word to the gates of heaven to life and salvation. Now the same thing happens with Nathaniel, the skeptic, filled with deceit like his forefather Jacob, the trickster. Having been invited by God's newest preacher, Philip, to come and see, Nathanael approaches Jesus. Seeing him, Jesus declares, here is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Christ's words declare Nathanael inwardly transformed. 
It's like Jesus saying, your sins are forgiven because I forgive you. Or you are justified before God because my righteousness is now your righteousness. And so the man, filled with deceit through this word, is now declared deceitless, without deceit, by Jesus as he simply speaks this word. Now, Nathaniel is stunned by these words and asks, where did you get to know me? In effect, he's saying, well, I know myself, and these words don't fit me any more than I have been believing that what's written in Moses and the prophets fits you, Nazarene. Me, no deceit? Certainly not with regard to you, Jesus. With regard to you, I am nothing but deceit, doubt, skepticism. So Jesus responds to him, I saw you under the fig tree. To understand these words, we only need to refer to our psalm today, 139. Jesus is saying to him what this psalm says, I have searched you and know you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up, I discern your thoughts from far away. I search out your path and you're lying down and I'm acquainted with all your ways. Even before a word is on your tongue, O oh, beloved Nathaniel, I know it completely. Jesus is saying, I know you. I know your deceit, your doubt, your skepticism, and now I have taken you, taken it from you. And in its place, you now have me, the truth. And so what pours forth then from Nathaniel's lips is faith. Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. All deceit is removed and truth pours forth. And Jesus basically then says, you think this is amazing? You ain't seen nothing yet. So Jesus then quotes to Nathaniel from Genesis 28, our first reading, it's like he's saying to Nathaniel, you remember your forefather, that old trickster Jacob, who was a deceiver like you? Remember when he was running for his life after he ticked off his brother by stealing his birthright and his promise? Well, you are going to see what he saw in his dream. Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus is saying that ladder, Jacob's ladder, it was me. Through me, Jesus says, heaven is opened up to you for this is why I have come. Now, very truly, I tell you, you who are listening here right now, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man also. When you are baptized, when you partake of the Lord's Supper, when you receive the absolution, when you listen to a sermon, heaven is open to you and you hear the voice of God. Just as Jacob and Philip and Nathaniel received the promise of God, you now receive this same promise in the word and the sacrament. And through them, Christ, who is the truth, hands himself over to you. And so, on account of Christ, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. And now, through this promise, you are made a true follower of Christ. So enter now into the kingdom of heaven. Amen.
I invite you to please rise as you are able and join me on page 49. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father and Lady, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God has mercy on you. He forgives you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthens you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keeps you in eternal life, now and forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Now, I've been asked, due to all of the germs and bugs going around, not to have you pass the peace, uh, but I leave it up to you, uh, and we will receive our offering.
pray. Merciful God, in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you embrace our lives with your great love for humanity. With joy and gladness we ask that these gifts may be for many a sign of that love, and that we may continue to share in your divine life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. As people called to love one another, let, let us pray for the needs of the church, the human family, and all the world. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, your son called Philip and Nathaniel to be his disciples. Fill the church with your Holy Spirit so that it may always hear and heed Jesus' call to follow him. Give it pastors, theologians, teachers, and leaders who are faithful to your word. And by the proclamation of all its people, draw many to trust in him who is the salvation of the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless, we pray, this congregation as we seek to do your will. Keep us steadfast in faith. Conform us ever more closely to Christ our Lord. And through our words and deeds, bring the gospel to those who need to hear it most. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send the power of your Holy Spirit into the hearts of all who suffer, especially Danny Nackreiner and Clarice Trebish. Fill them with health and hope. Bless all who minister to them. And let the radiance of your Son's love gladden their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, we thank you for the lives of your faithful servants who have heeded your voice in this life and now rest in your arms. Grant that we too may receive your gracious word made into disciples through your dear Son, Jesus Christ. Make us into living temples of your spirit. In your good time, gather us into your presence with Jacob and all the faithful people of Israel, with Nathan and Philip and all the apostles, martyrs, theologians, and saints of your church. Grant that with them we may rejoice forever in the salvation you have accomplished for us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Graciously hear and generously answer our prayers and petitions, dear Father, as may be best for us and to your greater glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now this blessing. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, fill you with every spiritual blessing. Amen. May the God of faithfulness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number uh, 652, Arise, Your Light Has Come. Mm -hmm. 